Over lengthy historical periods, therefore, the image ever more accurately encapsulates the behavior, and stories find their compelling essential form. With regard to the process underlying construction of the Old and New Testaments, Fry states, The Bible's literary unity is a byproduct of something else. We might call it an unconscious byproduct if we knew anything at all about the mental processes involved. The earlier part of the Old Testament, with its references to the book of Jasher and the like, gives the effect of having distilled and fermented a rich poetic literature to extract a different kind of verbal essence. And on a smaller scale, the same process can be seen in the New Testament. The editorial work done on this earlier poetic material was not an attempt to reduce it from poetry to a kind of plain prose sense, assuming that there is such a thing. This kind of sense implies a direct appeal to credulity, to the infantilism which is so exasperating a feature of popular religious and other ideologies. What we have is rather an absorption of a poetic and mythic presentation that takes us past myth to something else. In doing so, it will elude those who assume that myth means only something that did not happen. The second order semantic or verbal codification is grounded in the episodic or imagistic representation, tends over time to duplicate the hierarchical structure of that representation, and is predicated upon acceptance of the validity of the procedural and episodic memories. Semantic, episodic, and procedural contents therefore share in the intrapsychically integrated, conscious, or psychologically healthy individual identical hierarchical structure in their respective forms of action or representation. This integrated morality lends predictability to individual and interpersonal behavior, constitutes the basis for the stable state, and helps ensure that emotion remains controlled and regulated. Figure 47, the paradigmatic structure of the known, 